I stayed up super late one night just so that I could photograph this old abandoned shack here in New Zealand with the Milky Way behind it. Or did I? In actual fact, I took this photograph in the middle of the day on pretty overcast and very bland day. And in this video, I wanted to explore some photo editing techniques that would allow us to take a shot taken during the daytime and convert it to one that looks like it was photographed in the middle of the night. So this is the photo as it looked during the daytime when I actually took it. So come along with me now inside of Luminar Neo as we explore the process needed to convert a daytime photo into a nighttime photo. And believe it or not, it's a lot easier than you might think. Let's get to it. Where's my mouse? Oh, here it is. <laughs> so here we are inside of the editing section of Luminar Neo, and if I click the eyeball tool, we can see our before photo, and you can see just how different that is from my finished nighttime edit. And if I jump over to the edit section here, you can see by the number denoted here that we have 13 edits that comprise what goes into making this photo up. But I'm just gonna throw all of this away because every edit for me is different. Photo editing is an art form and on any given day I will edit my photos differently depending on how I'm feeling. I might use different tools. So there isn't a go-to formula, it's more about just following guidelines and then making some artistic decisions along the way. But the very first thing we want to address with any photo is the develop raw tool right here. This is where the heavy lifting of any photo edit is done. The very first thing we want to do is choose a camera matching profile. Now if you don't have access to this drop down box it's probably because you shot in JPEG. Uh, I'd strongly recommend you always shoot in RAW because that's going to give you the maximum leverage for manipulating your photos in post-production. Now I've chosen a camera neutral profile and that's always a really great place to start. If you go for something like camera vivid, of course you get a much more punchy image and it might look better straight away, but with a camera neutral or a camera flat profile, you're able to manipulate the colors and the contrast much more accurately and you have that control. Okay, so what we want to do with our edits here is just generally start getting this photo looking more like a nighttime shot. The one thing I'm not worried about is the sky, because I'm going to use Luminar's Sky AI replacement tool to automatically just flip out the sky for me without me needing to do any masking, um, which is absolutely amazing. So for now, all I'm going to do is just play around with things like the contrast, maybe bring the highlights down, and like I said, I'm disregarding the sky. I'm just looking at the foreground and the house elements of the photo at the moment. I'm going to bring my whites down. I'm going to bring my blacks up ever so slightly. For the sharpening, I'm just going to zoom in and grab the sharpen slider and crank that up and I don't want to go too far with that. That looks pretty good. There's not really much noise to worry about, so I won't worry about that. I could start to control the color of the photo with the curves panel here, but I'm not going to do that through there. Like I say, you've always got options, but I'm going to come into the color drop down section here and straight away I'm going to take the temperature and start pushing that more towards the blues and I'm going to grab the tint as well and just take out some of the green as well. And now the colors in the sky are going real crazy. I'm not worried about that because I'm also going to grab the vibrance and saturation sliders and just bring those down as well. At nighttime, there's so little light actually available in a scene that our eyes are no longer really registering color. We're seeing more of a black and white image, but more often than not, we see that with quite a bluey hue to it. And so that's why I've made those adjustments there and brought the saturation down. While I've got the curves tool looking at me right here, I'm just gonna play around with this and just see if we can't just darken off that foreground a little further while not losing too much detail in the shadows. Okay, let's have a look at our original and where we've got to. So we have a more blue and more desaturated look. So I'm happy with that, let's move on. If I'm doing a more realistic edit, I'll stay up here in the essentials editing section. But for what we're doing here, I want to get my sky in as early as possible. So, sorry, I don't want Relight AI, I want Sky AI. And from here, I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna choose one of the night skies that ship with Luminar. I don't know whether you guys appreciated that or not, but man, the speed with which Luminar was able to actually create a mask for us and drop this sky in, and a complex mask at that. Look at all the detail around the trees here and the hill line in the background. That was all done just with the click of a button, just selecting the sky that we wanted to drop in. So if I wanted to, I could go for a different sky, get real crazy and go for this one. But I'm gonna go with this one just because the color palette is a little bit more simplified. I like these deep, rich blues, and so we're just gonna go with that. Now, while at first glance, the mask does look really good, if we zoom in, 
you can see that we do have some slight haloing from the original sky around all this fine detail here. And that's where we can come into the mask refinement section. And for instance, we could crank the global slider up and that's gonna tighten the mask up around there. We can fix the details a little bit. And I think for the purposes of this, that's good enough. But listen, here's one thing to take note of. For maximum believability, you want the noise in the sky, i.e. the kind of film grain look that you've got there, to match what's in the foreground. If it doesn't, it is gonna be a little bit of a visual mismatch. Now, while I like the fact that Luminar does ship with a set of skies already included, I've gotta be honest, I don't think they're the best. The resolution isn't that great, and just like this one, they can be a little noisy. So I would strongly recommend a couple of things. Firstly, start your own sky library. When you see the sky looking amazing, grab a shot of it. And the second thing I'd recommend doing is invest in a really good sky library. I'm always switching out skies uh, for my architectural work, sometimes for landscape work, and having high quality, high resolution skies that I can bring into those projects is really important to me. So the one I use, I will put a link in the description below because I can't remember the name of it right now. So check that out if uh, you want to add to your sky library, which I do recommend. If we look at our original, and where we've got to, we're only two tools deep and already we're in a pretty good place, but we certainly need to refine it to make it look more believable. And obviously there's some more artistry that we can add along the way. And talking of artistry, I think one of the things that we want to do is actually put some structure AI in here. Now I've been really aggressive and crunched that all the way up to a hundred. Doesn't look good right now, but I'm just gonna selectively paint this in where I want it. So I'm gonna grab my mask tool, I'm gonna have my strength set somewhere down low, somewhere around sort of 25, 30% is always good. And now when I click and start painting, this effect is just gonna disappear. And now we just see the red overlay of the mask. And when I release, now we have this effect revealed only where I've painted the mask. And because I've been painting the mask at 26% here, we don't see the full effect that we cranked it up to. So if I want to see more of it, like there, maybe over the tree, I can just start building this effect up. It's the hut that is the most important thing here, so that's the area where I want to draw the viewer's eye. Perhaps a little reveal over the Milky Way there too. And now we can just toggle our eye to see before and after. Before and after, and that's really starting to help it pop. If you feel like you've gone too far with your mask, you can always switch to the erase tool, and then we can come in and actually just erase some of that effect, which is what I'm gonna do over the grass. The next thing I want to address is the greenery here in the foreground, because I feel that if we were looking at this at nighttime, we wouldn't be seeing these greens so vividly. Even though they're quite desaturated, they still catch your eye. I feel they belie the color unity that we should have going on between the blue in the sky and more of a deep blue in the foreground. And so let's come into the color section here. If you don't see those HSL options that I just had open, click that, and that just refers to the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. And if we come into the hue section, basically what we can do is start shifting around the hues in our photo. So for example, if I grab the blue slider and move that to the cyans, you can see that all the blues get more cyan or I can push more magenta into them. But it's not the blues I want to talk to, it's the cyans and the greens. And so I'm gonna grab the cyan slider and push that towards the blue. And I'm gonna grab the greens and push that all the way to the cyan. It's not having as much of an effect as I would like because this is already a very desaturated green. Let me toggle the eye switch just to see if this is even having an effect. Okay, here's our before, here's our after. It is muting those greens down just a little bit, it's tiny. You know what, I'm not gonna get too concerned about that right now. I'm gonna do some more editing and then I'll readdress the colors a little later. So for now, I'm just gonna press on, and one of the things I'd like to do is actually add a vignette. And as you guys know, a vignette is a darkening around the edges. Uh, we also have the option to brighten up around the edges, but I wanna darken things down, and we'll push that all the way. We'll tighten that in slightly, and now I want to open up the advanced settings because I wanna change the roundness effect just to hit more around the edge of the frame there, pushing it more towards a kind of rectangle rather than a circle. So let's push towards that sort of rectangular look. I'm gonna feather it all the way so that the transition is nice and soft. I feel like potentially it is getting a little dark in the middle, so I might actually just use the inner light here and I'll just bring the amount back down, just so it's in the realms of believability. So if I double click to reset it, this was with nothing, and now I'm just gonna start easing that on to a point where I feel like I'm happy with it. And there we go, minus 58's good. So let's look at our before. 
and our after, and that vignette just helps to guide our viewer's eye to the central part of this frame where all the interesting stuff is going on. And while we're thinking about guiding the viewer's eye with light areas, dark areas, I'm going to come in and use the Relight AI. What I like to do often with my landscape work is actually darken down the foreground and have it brightening up as we lead our viewer into whatever the subject is, in this case the derelict old house. Because if it's too bright in the foreground, our viewer's eye can actually almost drop off the bottom of the frame. And so it's kind of a way to hold your viewer's eye in that frame. So I'm going to grab brightness near, and I don't want to brighten it up, I want to darken it down and you can see if I take that to minus 100 we get a much darker foreground here that might be a little bit too much I'll toggle before toggle after it's not too bad though I'll just ease it back a little bit and we can play with the depth slider as well just to see how far we want to push that into the scene now this is one of the cool and surprising things I like about Luminar because there's so many ways to solve problems that you just might not think about. So the Relight AI feature, I was thinking about just using it to darken down that foreground, but I've just realized something. I've got this warmth near, warmth far slider as well. So if I actually grab this and take this to the left, we're going to actually be cooling off those colors. If I take it to the right, you warm those colors up. Uh, not that it's very saturated, so it's hard to see, but it is doing a subtle shift in the hue more more towards those blues, which was exactly what we were after doing before when I was in the color section. If we wanted to, we could even grab the warmth far slider and push that towards the blues as well. So I'm just going to ease this into the blue territory here, not as far as the foreground. So we've got a darker blue going on here and then just again, a subtle shift in hue. So if we look at our before and our after, and now we are just really start to craft the image and push the hues where we want them. The guys at Skylum did say that Luminar Neo was going to open up creativity for us and so far I'm really finding this to be the case because now I'm thinking okay well maybe we'll throw a little bit of uh, layered fog in here because because oftentimes if you're seeing fog or mist it's in the early hours of the morning and so we're doing a nighttime shot why don't we just crank some in if I push this all the way to 100 we can see that the mask isn't particularly great on this one and Luminar's AI it's good but it's not always perfect sometimes it's exactly what you need um, and sometimes you really need to give it a helping hand but that's okay because that's exactly what we can do if I kind of just set this roughly where I want it and I know that I just want a little bit of fogginess kind of across the front of the building here. I'm just going to grab the mask here. Again, have pretty low strength, 30% is fine. Click and paint. And just like that, we've just got a little bit of fogginess going on. And you can just click a few more times wherever you want to intensify that fog. And let's look at our before. And our after, I put a little bit up in the hill here. I don't really want it there. All right, we're in a pretty good place with most things apart from the color right now. So what I'm gonna do is just see what else we can do in terms of say the toning so that we can kind of match this more to the sky. And to see any effect, we want to get the saturation pushed up. And so I'll push that into the middle there just for now and just take the hue slider and push it around until I hit those blues. And that's talking into our shadows at the moment. We could also do a slight change, a bit of a shift on the highlights as well. So let's have a little look at those. Now I've made those changes. I'm just looking at the foreground, not the sky, just the foreground. So I'm looking at our before and our after. And now all of a sudden we're certainly seeing more of those blue hues appearing in the foreground. It's really oversaturating the blue in the sky. So what I want to do here is just mask in just into the foreground areas where I want it. So I'm going to push my strength just a little bit higher just so that I can get more of that effect in a little bit quicker. And I'm just going to paint this in pretty roughly, release and have a little look how we're doing. Before, after. Let's go for another pass just through here. It's okay, but currently I still feel there's a discrepancy between the highlights here in the foreground and the highlights in our sky where we've got these lovely, amazing orangey pinks of the Milky Way going on. And so to try and address that, what I'm going to do is actually come into the Color Harmony section here. We could tackle this in any manner of ways, but what I'm going to do is come into the Color Balance section here, and here I can actually talk into the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So let's start with the highlights and just see what we can do with those. And I've just shifted the sliders there just so that the colors represented in these highlights here are tying in a little more accurately with the Milky Way. Let's jump into the shadows, really push those blues. And I might grab the magenta 
just for a bit of a more creative kind of look to this. Let's look at our before and our after, and I certainly feel like the colors are tying in much better now, but now the saturation is just getting away on us just a little bit. So again, we can just jump back and add another color tool here and just grab the saturation slider and just ease that back to a point where we feel it's a little bit more believable. I think I could absolutely leave the edit here, but this is one of the things I really love with Luminar is it is just fun to edit with. And so I'm going to do a couple more things just because I can't resist. I'm going to grab the mystical tool here and I'm just going to see what it looks like if I pop a little bit of mystical on. OK, so this is none. 100% is too much, but it does give it a kind of dreamlike quality. And hey, we're talking about the nighttime here. So a little bit of dreaminess is a good thing, surely. Let's look at our before and our after. OK, we'll go with that. And to finish things off, let's jump into the mood section because applying a lookup table is an ideal way just to finish and harmonize those colors. So Bakersfield has a really bluey look to it. I know from experience that Santa Barbara might be a good option. If I click that, it's really giving us a nice dark contrasty look to this image. If we look at our before and our after, it's subtle, but again, it's just sort of enhancing that dark nighttime feel. Maybe we'll just ease it off a little bit and perhaps not quite as contrasty. OK, to create this file, if we look at our before and our after, we've got 13 edits that make it up from this to this. And I'll show you those edits. They are all recorded for us in this panel here. And at any time, we can jump back in so we can go all the way back to the develop raw and make some changes here if we wanted to. We can make changes to any of these tools. It's a completely non-destructive workflow, which I really, really like. And having used Luminar Neo for a few edits now, I'm really getting a sense of just how powerful it is to be able to apply these tools multiple times. And the fact that we can come back in and re-edit if we want to make adjustments, it's a really, really powerful and creative way to work. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this photo editing tutorial, taking a daytime photo and converting it into a nighttime image. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. And right now there's another video popping up around my head, which YouTube, I think, what are you doing down there? Come on. Hop. As I was saying, there's another video popping up around my head right now that the YouTube algorithm thinks might be interesting to you. What did you think to the edit, Maisie? Yeah, I liked it.